Hey, welcome to FS Pro. FS Pro is the region's first podcast focusing on all things insurance and insure tech in the UAE and the broader Middle East. I'm Vidya. I'm the founder of Forward, a startup that works with insurance companies to build their go-to-market digital propositions. Hi, I'm Ranjit Philip. I consult with startups in the zero to one stage and help them with their strategy, business model, and go to market. So for this episode, we have a returning guest, Lars German, who is the head of QIC's Digital Venture Partners. And that's what we mentioned, QIC DVP. You know, that's what it all stands for. So let's listen in to this exciting episode. Lars, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you with us here today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Always Thank pleasure you. being back with you. <laughs> Great. You know, the last time we spoke with you last, the QIC DVP had just entered the region. It created such a buzz in the whole region, really. And despite being so new to the region, you and the team led the region's first hackathon. And things have been just moving full steam ever since then, you know. So can you tell us a, a bit more about the progress that you've made so far from the time you guys have entered the market? What, how has it been for the last one year? Okay. Thank you for this question. Yes, it has been quite a journey for us. I think we came to this concept here, as you said, yeah. we believe the ecosystem is quite virtual in terms of intro text, so there need to be many things to be done. So we, we can conclusion, QSC is a dominant insurer in the region, we can do many things. This is why we have founded uh, Digital Venture Partners, where we invest into um, intro text that help us to build our very own companies much faster. So. Yes, we have done progress here. We have had, as you say, quite an ex exposure in the wider region. And it's not just a goal we really target the MENA region. Running the, the competition, running the summit. And I think we have been in a couple of conferences that we have been talking actually about the ecosystem itself. So I'm really happy of what, what is, has been done and looking forward to this year where it proves in the pudding, right? So we really have to get things out and not just talking, doing things. So this is, this is where we have been working the last six months, right? not PowerPoint, but getting things done for the ecosystem and for ourselves as well. That's very good. So, you know, kind of stepping back from that, taking an overall view, now you've had some time in the region so, and you've obviously worked outside in other countries as well. So what are your sort of high-level observations about the insurtech space, the innovation space in the MENA region? And do you see any similarities or dissimilarities between the mature markets like US, Europe, or, or maybe even Asia, which sometimes is seen as a little bit more advanced than some of our markets here? Absolutely. Sign the last sentence, right? So I believe it's a really specific market. And I think we're talking areas also about MENA and about parts, right? It's the Gulf and then you have North Africa. If I just look into the Gulf region, yes, there's certain innovation in insurance here. It's a lot of talk, rather talk and nothing else. We're still stuck in the way where it's an aggregator on driven business, while all these insurtechs that are around the other regions helping to really get innovations out are still not here. Yeah. I think we've talked about this before. There are a couple of ingredients that we don't have quite working here in the wider region that are there or existing already in, in Asia and Europe and the States. So if I look into it, I think the number of insurance incumbents that are able to help intertex with fronting of its capacity is really limited. It's one thing uh, innovation cannot happen because we need more of those. I think the regulations it's getting there, right? But it's, it needs to be even more aggressive in terms of insurance. It's a challenge all around the world, world yeah. right? Yeah. Regulation is, is a topic. Obviously, yeah. insurance needs to be regulated, yeah. but we need their environment to test new things out. So I believe this is on what we need as an insurtext to grow. On the other hand, I think there's capital available, at least in the Gulf region. There's not enough capital that really understands that insurance and intertex have a different investment cycle. So one of our reviewers and QSC and QSCDPP are trying to, to change that landscape as we are the experts in the sector. A couple of VCs that actually want to co-invest with us, right? Because we are seen as, 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 as people in the company that understands this. I think the other challenge that we're having is that the whole ecosystem is lacking proper talent tool, a talent pool that is trained in insurance and in digital insurance, right? A couple of them, mm -hmm. us including and some of other players, but it's not a massive pool of people that have ideas. And if you haven't worked in InsurTech, 
you're not getting the next idea and you're not just trying the next idea out. So this talent pool is really not there. And um, just take a couple of years, most probably to as And then finally, I believe we have a challenge because of our markets. Our markets, at least in the Gulf region, are really small. Yeah, so I hope nobody feels bad about it, but no, small really. markets. That's um, true. If I'm an ninja tech, I need to scale across markets when I enter in discussion with different kinds of regulators. So there's, there's a challenge here. Because there are a couple of bigger markets. Yeah, and if I look into MENA, yes, there are a lot of people there. Take a lot of people, but it's an absolutely underinsured market with its very own challenges. So yeah. scaling across the MENA region is really complicated, but it's a must do. Ninja techs don't have the money. Markets here that are big enough to really get into the scale. So, how can we make this happen? Well, I think there are some answers to it, but I see those five, six points as especially challenging in our environment, that more major in the rest of the world. No, that those are very relevant points, especially yeah. regarding the reinsurance and the scale aspect, right? That can really stymie innovation. Yeah, very good. Yeah. 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 No, so, and then coming back to QIC VP being a you know, CBC outfit it, it, itself. Now, what does QIC DVP look at or, or assess before investing in an insure tech firm? Do you invest at the idea stage itself or pre growth or growth stage? Can you tell us a bit more about the process that startups can expect? Yeah, sure. So, we have a focus on early stage. Early stage means that we can start with an idea, founded having an idea, and we are helping them even in our own office setup to grow this toward companies that are already out control to type or on the market, even with the front tech partner and trying to scale. So it's really early stage. There are not many intro techs here that actually are in the series A or B, right? So there are two or three yeah. in the health sector, but this is, this, that's it more or less. So it's really early stage. It's very focused on this is what the X actually needs to grow further. So we're helping these kind of intertechs. And intertech is always two ways, right? One is building tech capabilities that can be used in the insurance sector. And the second one is, well, I actually going out and sell a new digital proposition. So we are in this space. What we do as QC and DVP and our C actors, we are helping our very own venture build yeah. to test the ideas and get them out much faster. So it's not about spraying the money around and different companies that might look interesting. We only invest in companies that have some sort of additional capability or distribution angle to our own DVP venture builder. I think there's a different approach. This is a hybrid venture model that we're driving, but we believe it's the right structure for our very own group and for the ecosystem here. Ticket size, I think you said, right? Idea two, I think it's from 50K dollars to, let's say 50K dollars, something like this. And this is where we have our sweet spot. It doesn't mean that the round need to be limited to this amount. I think we have a couple of co-investors that are coming in. So the typical rounds, pre-CUSA or later seed here in the region is one and a half, two, three million, something like this. So I believe that the part is there getting in, we can manage this in the proper. And then we have a standard process, right? So we are running the tech competition. So a lot of deep flow is coming in there. A lot of interesting stuff we identify there, but we also have or we see partners that are talking to us and seeing things. And we obviously have partners globally. They have intertext that want to come to the region that we can help and support in their growth and, and through additional investments as well. On top of this, just to add, this is QSC view, right? QSC is bigger than just the MENA region. Um, we have at Antares Global a powerful reinsurance and um, other Lloyds. And there are many things that are happening where we have capacity to provide it to our digital insurance companies. So there is another work load for QRC DVP on this area as well. Yeah, I think that's a, a very good differentiator that perhaps that others other don't though. have and, and goes to the point that you mentioned about, you know, lack of reinsurance capacity. When you you have a global reinsurance, that's a great power oh. that you can give to an insure tech that you partner with. Uh, now, now, I know that you covered a lot of points. So I'm just going to adapt to some of the questions on the fly. Perhaps you can pick up a few examples and speak a little generally. I mean, I'm sure some of this is confidential. But some of the last year's insurtechs that you're picking up and working with, how are you helping them in developing and scaling and, uh, you know, meeting some of the challenges that you mentioned earlier? If you look into, uh, let's say, the top five that has been asked last year in the InsurTech competition in the summit, I think all of them 
I think you talked to two of them already, confirm that just being there and having been accelerated by us with the, the relevant insurance, digital insurance knowledge helped them tremendously. So there's one. Right. They will all confirm you that just being the top five in our Agilex Summit helped them to gain credibility towards other insurance companies, incumbents, partners, NBC. So I think this is something that is not tangible. Yeah. But actually for the startups, it's really hardcore because this is what everybody tells. And then on top of this, with one Intratech, we have the corporation of rolling out the products in one of the countries that we're working on. And I'll tell you the name, but this is one. We brought four of our top five companies in Intratechs to the biggest Intratech conference globally in Las Vegas. Three of the four actually had a pitch. There are 20 Intratechs pitching globally and we have three of them came from the MENA region. Yeah. Some of them actually Gained another, had won another startup competition, for example, with the KPMG, KPMG startup thing. So it's a mix of accelerating them in the process of the startup competition and then following up through potential investments, through potential partnerships within our group, but also beyond the group. So I think we are really happy with what we have achieved together. It was obviously our very first edition. This year, I think we have even stronger partners, stronger possibilities for the Intertex to grow. Got it. Perfect. No, that's, that's great. I think the visibility aspect is is brilliant. And also the fact that insurance experts are vetting your model gives them a lot of credibility globally when they go out and talk to other investors and, and get onto other platforms. Just a small follow up on that. And uh, you may you know choose not to answer as when you talked about the process, you mentioned the investment amounts. What are the sort of range of equity that you take? It'd be good to know. That's a really common question. Because if we start at the end, obviously we target 25, 30% or something like this, right? Okay. If they're going in into a company that's existing, has existing investors in there, it's less, right? So there's, there's no clear answer on it. Yes. We want usually a stake. Uh, we have the possibility to influence. So not dominate, but at least influence. Because if we invest in on the stage in tech, we have a certain view where we would develop this Intertech into in the next two years. And you can only do this if you have a little bit of pain. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean it's ours, right? It's still a founder running it, but yeah. it helps you in terms of guidance to be relevant. For us, the board seat is relevant yeah, because of this, because we believe it can really contribute to sort of growth for board seats. It makes sense. So this is the answer I can give you. It's not confidential, no, it just depends on that, that's, the case. That's, that's yeah. good. And, and I think it's very much in line with what an early does and expect. And I think it... Uh, adds a lot of value to be on the seat, guiding the strategy of some of these insurtechs because of the expertise that QIC DVP has. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that, that sort of influence and that expertise, you can really see in some of the guys and some of the guys that we have picked up through FS Brew, the likes of Velex, you know, getting another round of, you know, funds and stuff like that. So you can see that they're clearly progressing from where they started off with you. Now, I've got, I think, a similar follow-up to the follow-up that Ranjit had. Now, are you seeing these investments into these uh, organizations as a revenue growth opportunity or an acquit hire or a plain investment in which you expect a in a good multiplier return? What's what's the whole thesis, the investment thesis behind this? I don't think that this is to be higher. Yeah. This is typically not what we try to do. We see a value that we can contribute to the growth. So yes, it's strategic, helping probably us building faster and better. And secondary, but really relevant, there need to be a financial return. So yes, we look into, can we make money with this company? Yeah, but it's not the only, it's really about, can we help the startup to grow and can we profit from the startup and building more value on things faster? Got it. Awesome. So now, you know, obviously we've heard some, you know, news in the background, but we'd love to know a little bit more. I know that uh, your team is working hard uh, planning the second hackathon this year. So would love to hear a little bit more and understand the plan for that. Yeah. Thank you for the possibility to talk about it. It's, it's really exciting. Yeah. And we are really happy and also proud of what we've done last year and how the progress of our startups that we had in the top five evolved last year. And I believe it's yeah. not only pleasure the next but also almost mandatory for us to follow up on this. So what we will do, we started, we will announce a new startup competition, regional startup competition in the next days. It will be 
different this time, different way that last year we had a poor online competition and all the winners came to our main Intratech summit. Organized this way that we have been three, four, five pantries, reach to the rounds, selecting the very best Intratechs in the UAE, in Qatar, Oman, Saudi, Egypt, to name a few. And out of those very best of each country, by then the very best of all of them into our intro tech. They pitch again, select the very best ones. And then in the afternoon, there will be, and I think this is new, something that is quite powerful for everybody. We'll have a session with potential VC investors that are vetted. Yes. Yeah? So we know them. We have selected 20, 25 best intro techs for the whole Wiener region. There will be a matchmaking and we will enable potential funding round. And okay. we do the very same thing for. So not all intertechs are looking for capacity because some are just, just tech providers, but for those that are looking for capacity or funding partners, we strongly believe that this is, as we said in the beginning of our interview, is one of those missing parts in the ecosystem. So this will be a second part. So I'm really looking forward to this. This is the first day and then I have a second day. We have an amazing conference talking about digital insurance, intertechs with speakers coming from all over the world. Together with us and talk about this, uh, it's, it's hopefully really good this time, better, even better than last time, more people, more companies, and even more tangible impact for everybody participated. So we're really excited, excited that Fispro is part of this journey as one of our media partners. So yeah, let's, let's get, get the news out and get people in and companies in. Uh, it sounds, and, sounds exciting. Yeah. It should be almost like, you know. The a global conference now, not just a regional type of conference. Can they, can I think they're getting we have different part of some global conferences, and they see us as a partner, I believe, in in the Middle East, as we are not just a professional conference organizer. I think we're doing yeah. something for the that, that's the difference that we're doing here, and this is why different kind of people are coming to us. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then and then the, speaking to your team, it's, it's it's great to know how intensive it is going to each country, finding out what's you know who are the insure types that it, that's of quality, shortlisting them and taking them all the way to you know up to the summit. It's quite intensive, it's quite thorough, so it's quite exciting for the region really. So it's well done to QIC, DBP, and the team for putting this together. Really, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So and I, I think we're sort of coming closer to the end of the you know show itself. What are the future plans for QIC DVP over the next two to five years? And it's it's I know it's quite broad, but it, it'll be great if you could share some you know plans that you've got already. I think we obviously want to continue on this journey that we started last year, right? So I believe there's a lot of things to be done. Yeah? So we want to be an active part in the ecosystem. We have a couple of Ventures that are in the making, stealth, but are in the making, we believe they will have an impact on your whole ecosystem. We not only want to do this here in the Gulf, we want to do this in MENA, and I strongly look into how can we connect the MENA region with the rest of the world. So I would be really pleased to see this happening going forward. But obviously, this year is about MENA. Yeah. And can we bring Mina to the rest of the world even stronger and get influence? Yeah. And I think this is what is coming up thereafter. Perfect. Good. And as we sort of wind down on the podcast, it's, is there any topic that we have missed that you want to cover? Just an open-ended yeah. question. There's this, this one thing that's the always one at the end, but I think it's not the end. It's a really interesting area that we didn't touch on. So we talked in the beginning of our interview about the missing ingredients to make a flourish into the ecosystem. Yeah. We see this as QSC and as QSC DVP. And we also see that we are a private organization, right? So we nevertheless cannot do everything on our own. Mm. So what we have initialized last year and going full speed ahead is the MENA Introtech Association. Okay. It's a partnership yeah. of different insurance incumbents, VCs, knowledge partners. We really hope we get regulators in. We'll work together on the wider media ecosystem with the overall object that we say we want to enable 75 people in the next five years in the whole MENA region to have access to affordable digital insurance solutions. Yeah. So this is what we want to do. It's really a project coming from the heart because this is, I think, what is needed. And it's not a commercial proven thing, but the PQC, yeah, company. So we need to earn our money. The yeah. association 
goes beyond this. It's rather an ESG approach almost, yeah. but it will have a lot of impact. So yes, I wanted to close the interview with, with this. So everybody that wants to be part of this session, please reach out. I think we have a lot to do, but also a lot of rewarding activities coming out of it. So always want to throw an invitation here. No, that's great. And I think, yeah, it, it, that kind of probably something which will add a lot of value, help drive insurance penetration, innovation in the field. And it's really not about competition here, but about cooperation and working together and helping the broader ecosystem with this kind of deal. So I think it's really worth pushing and going for that. Very good. Excellent. This, this has been a great podcast recording. Enjoyed the session. So hope to see you very soon on the podcast again to talk about you know, how the hackathon develops. The exciting segment called the rapid fire with the leader. We are going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it rapid and we get to know more about the leader, the person that he or she is versus just their insurance subject matter. So we're very honored to have Lars Gehrman here from QIC DVP. Lars, are you really ready for this? I'm not sure, but let's see. Let's get started. <laughs> let's get started. So let's start off. What are your three favorite books that you recommend that we read as for Bart? So not intra tech related, but a nice It's a Dune. The Dune series. I started with one and then went to an eight. I love it. I think it has a lot of thinking behind. There's this other thing and I think you understand the theme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, philosophical sci-fi books is what I love. Yeah. Three book yeah. problem. It's another one which I really loved. And then obviously you have to read a little bit about business books. So, and I will not tell you which one, but um, there, there are many business books that they're actually quite good in helping you. So. Good. Awesome. Awesome. What's your favorite hobby? Yeah. My family, I would say, yeah, it's not really a hobby, but this, and I enjoy it very much, right? Apart from this, I love running, right? So it gives me calm. Awesome. Awesome. What's your favorite band? I love rock, indie rock. So my favorite band clearly is Tool. Ah, nice. Awesome. Excellent. Brendan, take over. Why is that? Because Tool is not only doing rock, but do a, does a symphony in rock. And this is why I'm a deep fan of Tool. Okay. That's nice. Really? So here comes the next few. So what was your first? It was actually close to our topic, working as a consultant in his first digital insurance MJA. Oh, wow. okay. Fantastic. What would have been an alternative career if you were not in this current line? Look, I have seen six or seven different industries in my whole working experience. So I've taught education, kids education, trading, leasing, finance, so many, many things. So I think I'm not my whole life in insurance and well-be. So right. insurance is just a really interesting area right now because a lot of things are happening. So many right. areas, this is how I, I need to see new things. Right. It could be, it could be anything. Perfect. And this is the controversial one. So what is your favorite city in the Middle East? Between Doha, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Muscat, Riyadh, and why? I have to say, I still miss a couple of really nice cities. I know they're really nice. So it's fun. So what is my nicest city? I know I will be in Riyadh in a couple of weeks. I'll be in Moscow. But I think there are 20 other cities that I want to see. So it's right. rather than saying this is the nicest one, I say I love the different environments, the different vibes that every city has. This is how I work and function different environments, but this is what I love in the Middle East. Really, it's about a different kind of setup and everything gives you the right answer to the right uh, moment of time. Perfect. That's, that's the right way to answer. Good laughs. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the rapid fire. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.